In this video we'll be adding a door system to our Doom clone that comes complete with keys and a system to spawn enemies on the other side. We'll build each door in three pieces. We'll create a new empty game object that will be our door base and zero out the transform. Next as children we'll have a door frame empty game object and also a door empty game object. We'll put our door pieces in each empty accordingly. Now there's a couple of ways we can build our door. The easiest way is use a bunch of standard unity cubes and piece them together for the door frame and then also for the door. As long as you keep this structure, any way you go about making them will work for us. I'm going to opt out for use in Pro Builder. It can be found in Windows Package Manager and it's a powerful tool that practically lets you model within Unity. If you'd like a tutorial on how to use it, let me know in the comments. Now we still have the same structure and as long as our pieces have a collider, just as our default cube did, then we're good. Importing your own models will also work fine. Now we're almost ready to animate the door so we'll move it out in front of us a little bit. But before we do that, let's give it a splash of color. So I made a folder inside my materials called door and I added a few materials. So we'll need a basic door color as well as a red, blue, and a green. Now we're ready to animate, so we'll need our animation window. If yours is missing, open it with window, animation, and animation. Now let's click our door empty game object of our base door. We'll create a new animation clip called door idle and we want to save it in our animation clips folder. This will be our closed state of the door and it only needs one keyframe. So we'll click the record button and we'll just move the door up a bit and back to where it was. And then we'll click record button again to stop and you'll see one keyframe. Next we'll need the door open animation so we'll create a new animation clip called door open. For this one we'll hit record. We'll move this slider to 0.3 or the half a second mark. And we'll just pull our door to the position we want when it's open. Now you can click record to stop and we have our animation clips. Now we need to go to the animator window. This can also be found in windows and animation. So the orange clip is our default starting clip. We need a transition to the door open clip. So first let's go up here and select parameters and click the plus symbol. We're going to use a trigger and we'll name it open door. Right click the default clip, click make transition. Drag it over to the open door clip and left click. Now we'll select the transition by clicking the arrow and over in the inspector let's disable has exit time. We'll also go down here and click the plus to add a condition and since we only have one it's going to go ahead and set it up for us. And that's it for the animation. Now we need something to detect the player so we'll go to our main base door object and create a box collider. If you press this button here it'll show you the bounds of the box and you can edit it by dragging these little dots and we want to make it big enough for the player to enter it from either side and when we're finished we'll make sure to set this to is trigger now we'll add another component and this will be a script called door and it will hold all of our logic we'll wait for a second for it to compile and then we'll double click it to open it in visual studio we want our door to detect whether the player has entered the trigger and then set our trigger in our animator. So we need a public animator reference called door anim. And then we can save it and go to Unity real quick and we can just drag in the door object with the animator into the door anim slot. Now back in the script we can KO the start and update function because all we're going to need is a void trigger enter function. Now in the function when it's triggered, we'll detect if it's the player with if other dot compare tag and it's player. 
So if this is the player, we'll open with our animator with door anim dot set trigger. And this string needs to be identical. So Pascal case open door. So it now detects the player and opens. We have a little looping problem at the end. And we can fix this by finding our door open animation in the project window and then turning off loop time in the inspector. Now the door will open and it will stay open. Our base door is almost finished but we need to add one more system. You'll see here that if our enemies are beyond the locked door we can actually trigger them too early instead. For now, we're just going to tell the door to also spawn in any enemies that we need in that area. To do this, I create a simple public game object called Area to Spawn. And right after we open the door, we'll set this game object to be active with Area to Spawn dot set active and true. You can now see in the hierarchy that we have an empty game object, in this case called Room 1, and it's just a bunch of enemies as children. We'll keep the enemies active and just deactivate the object, and then we'll drag this in our door script. Now let's use this base door to make our three variations. First I'll clean up my scene a little. I'll delete this pedestal that the enemy is on and drag him out of the way. Let's fix up this nav mesh that I hacked up for this tutorial. In our window, AI navigation, we'll navigate to our bake tab. Making sure my gizmos are on, you can see that I've broke it. We'll just hit bake and now it's ready when we need it. Back on our door, we have everything ready except this missing area to spawn, but that's fine. We'll sign this when we're ready when we go to place the doors. So let's duplicate the entire door object three times. And this is our green door, red door, and blue door. Currently they all open for our player, so we'll need to know what keys are. First, let's jump back to our player. Below the player health, we'll add a new script called player inventory, and we'll open it up. So here we're just going to use three public booleans, public so we can access them from the door script and our door pickup. So this is all that we need. So let's save and go back into Unity. Now go to any one of the doors and double click the door script to open it once more. Now we need a public boolean, we'll call this requires key. And in our compare tag, we can do an if check. So if requires key. Then we want to do more logic. Else requires key is not true, then we want the door to open instead. Back at the top, we're going to need three public booleans, just like our player inventory. This time we're going to use commas and write it all on one line. So we'll have require red, comma, require blue, comma, and require green. And let's go back and change our player inventory script the same way, so we're consistent. So back in the door script, now inside the if statement of requires key, we'll do three checks. So we'll say if required red, so if this is the red door, and so we'll grab the player inventory script off the player when he triggers this. So we'll say other dot get component, and then we're going to say player inventory, and we'll check if it has the red key by accessing its boolean dot has red. 
So if it's a red door and the player has a red key, we'll open. And the same for the other two doors. We'll check against blue and then we'll also check against green. We can copy this door open logic and paste it in all three of our checks. We can save and go back into Unity. So we have our player with three booleans. And then our doors with three matching booleans and an extra for our base door. Our base door will have everything is false. So set up the other doors by checking the required key and then what color for each door. Now only the base door will open, but if we were to manually change the player inventory to have a key, then that door will also open. So now we can turn these into prefabs. So we'll grab one and center it and then we'll open our prefabs folder and make a new one called doors and then we're going to drag this door in. After it's a prefab we can delete it out of the scene and then we'll do the same for the others. Center it, make it a prefab and delete it out of the scene. So the doors are finished and it's time to make the key pickups. This is the exact same process from the previous video that I have on pickups and billboards. We're going to need to drag in our sprites that we plan on using, select them, and set their texture type to Sprite 2D and UI. We'll apply these settings. We'll create an empty game object and we're going to start with green pickup. As a child, we'll create a new quad for our graphics. We'll zero out their positions. And I'm going to drag the pickup game object above the ground and forward in front of us a little bit. So next, click our quad or our graphics and make sure its collider is turned off. Back on the root pickup object, we'll add a boss collider. We'll make it a bit bigger than our graphics like we did in the last video. Make sure that this collider is set to is trigger. Next add a new script called key pickup. After we open this we'll need those three booleans once more. We'll call this is red key, is blue key, and is green key. We can delete the update and start function. We'll use once more the on trigger enter function. And also again, we'll compare to see if it's a player. So if other dot compare tag player, then we'll check what key pickup this is and give the player inventory the correct key. So we'll say if is red key, other dot get component player inventory dot has red is equal to true and the same for the other two so if it's blue set the blue boolean to true and likewise for the green we'll save and in unity we'll set this to is green and we'll set up the graphics. Let's call the quad key graphic. And we'll just drag our sprite straight onto it. And then in the inspector, we will need to set it shader to sprite and default. Then finally, we'll add the sprite rotator script that we have. 
a minor adjustment to the graphic and everything works but once we run across it then we want it to be destroyed so back in the script we'll just add destroy game object at the end of our if statement and save now in unity you can see in the inspector that our inventory is changed to include the key and then it disappears so now make two more pickups for blue and green using the same steps and changing its settings to match its color. Finally, we can center these and drag them into our pickups prefab folder. So now we should have a working door system that we can pick and choose from when we go to build our level. So until our next video, Spawn Camp out.